Hello and welcome. My name is Rainer Böhme and I teach information security and privacy at the Department of Computer Science of the University of Innsbruck in Austria. This week we will explore how security economics can help organizations to manage their information security. You might have observed that managing and management are overloaded terms. When we use them, we mean a systematic and goal-oriented approach towards designing social and technical systems. This typically includes tasks such as the definition of goals, information gathering and analysis, decision-making, that is choosing between alternatives, as well as controlling the outcome. In order to manage something, you need some freedom of action, a set of alternatives to choose from. If all relevant actions were predefined, we'd speak of implementation rather than management. We take a top-down approach to security management in this block. This segment starts with high-level strategies and we'll discuss how to implement them down to the level of operational security in the following segments. Also, the term strategy has several meanings. In the management literature, it often refers to high-level and long-term plans with a substantial impact on the organization's success. In the context of game theory, the term has a more specific meaning. An action is called strategic if it anticipates the reaction of counterparts with diverging interests who act in an equally strategic and rational way. Because many realistic attackers in cybersecurity scenarios are indeed strategic, game theory has become a popular analytical tool for studying the economics of information security. When we talk about management, we usually take the perspective of a single organization or perhaps of a single department within a larger organization. This differs in one important aspect from a global or policy perspective taken in other segments of this course. A manager's objective is to maximize private benefit for his organization rather than utility for an entire ecosystem or society at large. There is nothing wrong with taking the selfish perspective for a moment. It is primarily the responsibility of policy to create an environment where the sum of actions that result from private utility maximization supports a desirable social outcome. Now turning to cybersecurity. The action you choose as an organization largely depends on who you are. Therefore, we segment the various players in the commercial cybersecurity arena into four broad categories security providers, security demanders, the security industry, and attackers. Indeed, building adversary models to study attacker motivations and strategies is an essential part of security economics, just as research into attack technologies is part of security engineering. For now, let's focus on the defender roles. We call the parties who are in the best position to shape the information security environment, security providers. In simple terms, this is the IT industry. By contrast, security demanders are the parties who depend on the available information security environment. These are the IT industry's customers. Here I have in mind businesses that deploy information technology to remain competitive rather than individual end users. Security providers, think of Silicon Valley, are characterized by IT being their strategic capital. They make money by developing this technology further, often following an aggressive growth strategy. Security demanders, think of Wall Street or Michigan, make money in the mature markets of some conventional industry. And since the 1990s, increasingly with the help of information technology, IT adoption boosts their efficiency so they can stay competitive. For security demanders, IT services have become a commodity, goods without qualitative differentiation. For example, 
most banks cannot expect competitive advantage from a strategic differentiation in IT use. Everyone in the industry uses similar office communication and ERP systems. Or as Niklas Carr memorably wrote in 2003, IT doesn't matter. What is important to understand these two roles better is this. Neither security providers nor security demanders have a core competence in security. Security is one of many issues on their agenda, a fact that the security industry, or third segment, has learned to turn into a business. The security industry has built a core competence in selling security to customers in need. Security providers and demanders differ in their demands for the products and services offered by the security industry. The security strategy of security providers is primi primarily governed by the rules of information goods, exactly as Ross has explained earlier in this course. By contrast, the security investment decisions of security demanders mainly depend on the budget allocation, which again depends on the combination of the senior management's awareness and priorities, as, as well as the security manager's negotiation skills as he tries to create awareness and make a case. As a rule of thumb, security provider security decisions are business driven, whereas security demander security decisions are budget driven. What defines the security strategy for security providers? Recall that the economics of information goods create an environment with significant network externalities and economies of scale. The market rewards first movers with monopoly rents. At the same time, all expenses for the development of a software product are sunk, not recoverable, if your competitor wins the race. So it is perfectly rational to ship today and fix tomorrow and to concentrate development efforts on features visible to end users in order to increase the likelihood of fast adoption. Avoid adding security features in the short term because they cost you time, money and functionality. With an eye on the long term, make sure that you maintain the option to retrofit security in case you get lucky and become so successful that bad security negatively affects your reputation. For example, Microsoft spent a fortune on recovering from the initial decision to strip Unix-style access control for single-user personal computers. This decision backfired when PCs got connected to the Internet and became multi-user machines once they started running software for multiple online sources. What defines security strategy for security demanders? Here I am going to enumerate three reasons for adding what I call real security and one reason to add what I call best practice security. Of course, you've got to do something if a lack of security creates direct losses to your own business. This includes fraud prevention for e-commerce, defenses against denial of service attacks if you've become a victim, or if your insecurity threatens strategic partnerships such as peering arrangements for service providers who do not properly police their networks. In simple terms, you add security for your own business. The second reason to add real security is if a lack of security harms your customers to an extent that it generates indirect cost, for example, through reputation loss and customer disaffection. The need for action is highest if you're lagging behind your industry, or security incidents at your organization have become public. Also make sure that you communicate your improvements. In simple terms, reason two is when you add security for your customers. The third reason to add real security is less charitable. I'm talking of cases where security supports your business model for example, by amplifying customer lock-in, digital rights management, intentional incompatibility, and Ross's earlier example of cryptography in printer cartridges belong to this category. For comparison, reason three is 
when you add security against your customers. In all three cases, your organization has an interest in that the security mechanisms are not only efficient, cheap, but also effective in thwarting the attacker's intentions. But not all security investments are made for one of these three reasons. A great share of security spending adds what I call best practice security. These are controls acquired for the sake of being compliant with industry standards. Having them, regardless how effective they are, helps senior managers disclaim liability if something goes wrong. For us, it is important to identify best practice security, not in order to fight it, but to understand motivations and decisions in practice. Again, it is perfectly rational for organizations and their managers alike to invest in best practice security. You ought to point to policy if what the standards require is too far away from what is good for society.